What if your kid could learn a skill at 10, even five years old that most adults haven't mastered until their 30s or beyond? What if I told you that the secret to building wealth could be taught even before they learn algebra at school? Or what if your kids could easily grow their money so that by the time they're 17, they have $100,000 in net worth and it doubles and doubles and doubles until they have almost $1.6 million by the time they're in early retirement? We all know that the earlier you start investing, the better. But it's not just about knowing, it's about doing. And most importantly, it's about enjoying the process so that we can keep up the momentum. Today, I'm gonna talk about seven ways to start investing with your kids so that you can spark a love of investing so profound, they'll thank you profusely when they're buying their first car with the passive income from their investments or when they're taking you on their first Hawaiian vacation. These seven simple steps are gonna help you get your kids on an investing journey earlier so that they can set it themselves up way easier than many of us had it not starting until our late 20s or 30s or even 40s. Investing is easier when you get started sooner. It's a fact, it's called compounding, in fact. While that shouldn't deter those of us who didn't get started until later years, such as like when we're 35 after a decade or two of raft fighting and traveling around the world, um, we can still help other people learn to invest sooner. But really investing isn't very exciting in those early years, right? It's all about the magic of compounding and being in this game for the long term and starting as soon as possible. So how can we inspire our kids to take this action when there isn't this really quick payoff immediately in the form of making lots of money? We want them to be able to see that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow because when we're investing for a long period of time, we can certainly build up a very large pot of gold. Now as a parent, or maybe you're a teacher or you're an auntie or uncle, we want to instill these concepts in our kids, in the younger generations earlier, so that they can take advantage of compounding even sooner than we did. I also know that we can't force our kids to love investing as much as I love investing. I can't even get my kids to put their shoes on in the morning or eat asparagus. So how do we help them understand the magic of investing? How do we help them see the flexibility that passive income can bring into our lives or as a freedom of being able to determine how we want to spend our own time? Okay, first step one is to establish a family investment bank. Here's how this works. As soon as your kid starts to get allowance, a portion of that allowance is going to go into the family bank. Now, you are the banker here. You're the bank. And we're going to give them an overinflated interest amount so that they can start to see the magic of compounding as soon as possible. For instance, my daughter gets $5 a month. 30% of that, or $1.50, goes into the family bank. She earns, hold on, 10% every month on this money. Now, this is overinflated, like I said, on purpose. We want her to be able to see that compounding quicker than before. As soon as hopefully she realizes that that money is making money and we talk about that money that that money makes every month, I say, look, sweetie, this has just been sitting in this jar working really hard and it made 15 cents in its first month of sitting there. The next month, whoa, that money has been working hard in that jar and it earned you 32 cents. So we're gonna talk about this every time that she earns money. This is a great way for kids to just kind of have a simulation investment. I also suggest that with your allowance, you put money into a charity bucket, maybe 10%, and into a regular savings account, another 10%, let's say. So we're gonna be able to look at the growth of that regular savings account to the family investment account over the course of these years. Now, naturally, this bank will close, right? They won't be able to invest in this bank for the rest of their lives. A friend of mine, Camilla Jeps, who told me about this strategy, suggests that we open this bank for them essentially between ages like five and 12. After 12, no more false overinflated investing. In this process of opening your family investment bank, also take out physical money to show them what's going into these jars. I really enjoyed doing this with my daughter recently because we could see what it looks like to have a dollar in pennies, a dollar in quarters and dimes, and really start to talk about, well, the value of a penny, while it's kind of cool looking because it's a different color, is not that that high, right? If you have a jar full of pennies, 
it's not worth as much as a jar full of quarters or a jar full of hundred dollar bills. And finally, allow them to go shopping with this money while they can't touch the family investment bank, right? They can save up for specific goals with that savings fund and spend that, right? And I am just burying myself for the day that she wants to blow all her money on something that I think is not worth it, right? But she's got to learn that in the process, right? I can't put my own values of what is worth money on her. She needs to learn that herself, right? Again, I can't make her love investing. I can't make her love money, but I can talk to her about what's going on. Before I go any further, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps me know which content is helping people the most. That leads to step number two is to talk about family money decisions together. So as you're making your own decisions about grocery shopping, about different vacations you'll take, about different investing you're doing, involve your kids in all of those conversations. This is great practice for you to help develop healthy communications and healthy emotions around money. This is essential to be able to love the investing process. It's not have a fear or weird negative baggage around money. For instance, I grew up in two separate households, a divorced household, and in one of those households, I had extremely toxic, toxic conversations about money. We were so deep in the scarcity mindset pit that spending money felt really scary in that household. I felt embarrassed every time we went to go tip a waitress because I knew that my dad was gonna short that person so much even if they were super kind and helpful. Every penny was scrutinized. Every financial decision was stressful, right? So these are the kinds of conversations that can really put negative connotations around money to our kids. It's taken me decades to kind of reframe my views of how money can actually be a force for good in this world, that money actually makes us into potentially better people and not only worse people, right? So. You can start these conversations by really kind of stripping the emotion out of money. Money is simply a tool to do the things that we want to do in this world. It's not inherently good or bad. So be sure that you're having these conversations with your kids early. Another tip here is to get storybooks about money. I just got a great book that I'll link to in the description below called Damon Learns to Earn. And it talks about how he started his first business, how he thought of an idea and that that idea was in need by a lot of people and how he determined how much to sell these t-shirts for. This is a really great way to start involving your kids in money decisions is to bring it into story form. All right, tip number three is to show your kid the custodial IRA account that you set up for them when they were born or quickly go set up one for them right now and then show it to them. So this is a great way for literally your kids to start investing and having their money grow inside real investments as soon as they're, they're born, right? Technically they have to have earned income to be able to contribute to an IRA, but you can be really creative around earned income. For instance, there are some very lucrative baby modeling opportunities, even within your own household. So if you have your own personal business, you can find ways to pay your kids and put that money directly into their IRA. I'll give you an example. So we rent this house out while we travel on Airbnb. Um, we tend to travel for months at a time, so it ends up being working out really a lot in our favor. Comment below if you'd like to learn more about that. But I pay my kids to show up in the photos I use for marketing, right? And I just put all of that money directly into their accounts. They actually don't even know they're getting paid, but they're one and five years old, right? This is incredibly powerful wealth building because they're gonna start that compounding journey a lot earlier. So open up this account and show it to them. Say, look, you've been earning this money and it's been growing and growing, right? It's not gonna be exciting at first, but it just so that they know that it's there. You can start to use the word stock market about different index funds. Again, this is just vocabulary to throw out there. They don't have to understand it and always make it fun. If they get bored or annoyed by it, turn it off try something else. As your kids get older and have real jobs, encourage them to continue investing into these accounts. You can also set up some sort of matching strategy that if they're able to invest $1,000 per year from their earned income, their after school, their weekend job into that, that maybe at the end of the year, then you're willing to match that, right? But if they only invest 800, they're not going to get that match. So there's a little bit of incentive there. All right, that was steps one through three and how to teach your kid to invest. I've put the next steps four through seven in this video here. So take a look at that one next.